Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to round 10 coverage of the 2015 U.S. Chess Championship taking place in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, from round 10, I selected this game between Conrad Holt and Sam Shanklin to take a look at. Uh, Holt and Shanklin are both uh, two young, uh, tactically inclined players, so we get a very interesting clash between uh, the two of them. Uh, before I go on, I also have to mention that uh, Sam Shanklin is another product of the Northern California chess scene. So that makes uh, three of the players in the tournament from Northern California. It's uh, Sam Sevian, Daniel Neroditsky, and uh, Sam Shanklin. Okay, so Conrad kicks off with d4, and uh, Shanklin plays knight to f6, c4, e6, as if we're going to get a uh, Nimzo Indian. But uh, Conrad avoids that by playing knight f3. And uh, Shanklin at this point plays one of the main responses here, which is just to transpose into the queen's gambit decline with uh, d5. So we get normal moves, knight c3, and c6 going for the semi-slav setup against the queen's gambit. And now um, white has a choice between playing solidly with uh, e3 and just defending the uh, c-pawn with the bishop, or he can play as uh, Conrad did, bishop g5. And in the line Conrad selects, this actually involves a pawn sacrifice, because after the move h6, the bishop is uh, put to the choice. And uh, it used to be thought that uh, bishop takes f6 was uh, required. <clears throat> after bishop takes f6, um, queen takes, then pawn to e3 can be played, or um, the pawn can be exchanged. But in any case, there's time to defend the c-pawn. But it was discovered uh, a while back that actually the bishop can retreat here, and white can sacrifice a pawn and get good compensation. And that's uh, the line that Conrad chose to play here. So uh, Shanklin grabs the pawn immediately, and then uh, Conrad puts another pawn in the center with e4. And that's part of the idea for the gambit is that uh, white gets a lot of center influence with these two pawns being unchallenged. Um, now g5 is played to kick the bishop back. Of course, the move e4 put this pawn under attack, but now there's time for black to play a b5 and defend that pawn. So black is holding on to the pawn for a, the moment. Now knight to e5 is played, and um, this is attacking the c6 pawn, and uh, Shanklin plays knight bd7 saying, go ahead and take the pawn back. I'm, I didn't really mean to hold on to it all that much. Uh, but Conrad decides to keep playing as a gambit, and he plays the move bishop e2. Just briefly, um, it's, it's entirely possible to take that pawn. After queen b6, though, uh, black gets an okay position. The knight really doesn't have much better than to go back to, uh, to e5. Or you could play some tricky line, like trying to support it with d5. But in either case, uh, we get a balanced game with uh, chances for both sides. So there was nothing wrong with that move. But uh, while Conrad is trying to play this as a gambit, he's not going after the pawn. He's just uh, continuing to develop. So now uh, uh, Shanklin puts the bishop on b7, defending the c6 pawn. Queen to c2. We get some normal developing moves. Bishop to b4, pinning the knight. Rook to d1, putting the rook in a good central location, defending the center and uh, indirectly taking a look at the queen on d8. Uh, a6 is played, just showing up the structure over on the queen side. There are sometimes ideas of um, sacrifices on b5, and so this... Uh, Helps, helps overprotect the, the b5 pawn. Uh, white castles here. And now at this point, uh, Sam decides to trade off the knights. Knight takes, bishop takes. And we get uh, castles. So we can pause and take stock. Uh, white has continued to play a pawn down for about uh, six moves now. We it started on move eight, and we're now on move 14. So six full moves. And uh, he's not in any hurry to... to uh, uh, get the pawn back. He's going to continue to play a pawn down. Um, what he has going for him is there's a bit of a weakness over here on the king's side that he can potentially attack, and he has the strong center. So that's what his compensation is, but he has to play very actively to uh, maintain equality here. And he uh, kicks off with uh, h4, just directly going after these uh, weakened uh, king's side pawns. Sam plays queen to e7, preparing to bring a rook over if needed. Um, a3 now kicking the bishop. And the bishop uh, has no good square to retreat to. If the bishop were to go back to uh, d6, uh, white could exchange the bishop and then play the move 
uh, e5 forking the two pieces there. So bishop takes c3 is pretty much forced. Bishop takes knight. And now uh, white has gathered, uh, in addition to his other advantages, he's gathered the advantage of the, the bishop pair. So he has, he has good compensation for the pawn. Rook a to c8 is played. And uh, hg, hg, the weakness uh, <coughs> on the king side is exploited a bit, opening up the h file. And now uh, rook f to e1. Preparing this uh, interesting maneuver of the rook up and over. Trying to take advantage of the uh, open h file. So the knight drops back to d7, kicking the bishop back, and also preparing this uh, queen maneuver we'll see in a few moves. An interesting way for Shanklin to get his queen over for the defense. After bishop g3, uh, the king goes up to g7. This is first to uh, prepare to bring a rook over to the h-file to meet White's plan of bringing a rook to the h-file. Um, the bishop goes to g4, getting another piece over on the queen side. Now uh, Black can starts this queen maneuver, queen to f6, rook up to e3. So as I, as I mentioned, it's headed for the h-file. And the queen goes to g6. So the knight was moved out of the way so that the queen could come up and over. And now the queen is protecting some of these squares along the h-file. And after uh, f4, Conrad vigorously continuing to attack, um, knight to f6, the knight comes back to defend. And uh, for a moment, everything looks okay. But there is this one uh, key move here that White plays uh, which really puts the question to Black's whole position here. So if you want to take a second, see if you can figure out what the, uh, what the, the best attacking move is here for, uh, for White. Okay, uh, I'm going to give the answer away. What Conrad played was f5, hitting the queen and um, asking the queen where it wants to go. And it just turns out, it's, it's kind of crazy, but there's no good square for the queen. Um, and uh, it doesn't help to exchange. After an exchange, the pawn comes to f5, the replacement pawn comes to f5, and the queen still has to move. So exchanging doesn't change anything. So the real question is, uh, where can the queen go? And uh, the queen can't go anywhere, is the answer. The queen is actually trapped here. Um, so just to illustrate, because this is kind of hard to believe, but uh, suppose the queen were to uh, go to... Um, h6 here. Just I mean, there, there's only a couple squares that it has a choice of, so say h6. Uh, first of all, white plays the move bishop to e5, pinning this knight, and now threatening simultaneously to bring the rook over, and the queen is trapped. <laughs> you can see now the queen really is trapped. It has no squares to go to. It could drop back to uh, um, h7, say, still rook to h3, chases the queen all the way back here. And now, um, after the move, queen to d2, taking a look at the h-pawn, there's no piece that can defend the h-pawn. <laughs> the king can't get to it. Notice the king, all the squares the king has can go to are blocked by uh, the uh, pawn, they're covered by the pawn or the rook. The knight is pinned, so the knight can't move to defend that pawn. The bishop and the uh, Rook over here on the queen side are, are no help, and this, this rook is no help either. There is no piece that can defend the uh, g-pawn, and actually there's a mate in seven in this position. White, uh, black has no way of stopping white from just uh, taking that pawn and bringing all his pieces in and delivering checkmate. So, uh, so it's a completely losing position if the queen moves. Um, let's see. We could try and save a tempo here by playing queen directly to h7, um, but still bishop to e5 with the threat of rook to h3, and, uh, and black is once again helpless. I mean, it's a really kind of an incredible position. If you want to uh, set this up uh, on your own uh, board at home sometime and take a look at it, see if you can find a defense for black. <laughs> and uh, and uh, really, there's no, no way to save the queen. The only defense is to actually sacrifice the queen and get some compensation. But there is... Uh, it's, it's actually a reasonable uh, queen sack. So let's show how it was played. It was played, knight takes g4 here, grabbing a piece, and, um, and uh, white grabs the queen, of course, and then black gets a rook. So black got a, um, 
a bishop and a rook for the queen, which is uh, similar in value to the queen. Um, maybe uh, the queen is slightly more, but uh, black also has a pawn. So, um, and actually if we count, I think maybe black has two pawns if he can round up this one. And that would be uh, actually adequate, uh, a reasonable trade of two pawns, a bishop and a, uh, a rook for a queen would be sufficient. Uh, so black would be okay here, and, and maybe is okay here. It's just, it's a very tricky position to play. The uh, chess engine gives a slight advantage to white here, just, just for your information, but not, not an overwhelming advantage. Anyway, uh, Conrad continues with queen to e2. And now um, knight takes d1, picking up another piece, but, uh, but uh, he's going to have to give some material back because... Uh, well, g takes f7 is played here. And uh, knight takes c3, just grabbing grabbing material while he can because he's planning to give material back to defend uh, himself from the attack. But at the moment, uh, you can see that white just has a queen and a bishop against two rooks, a bishop, and a knight. So from a material point of view, uh, black is, is totally winning. But uh, there's queen h5 here, defending the pawn and uh, threatening to bring the bishop to uh, e5 which would be a mate. So uh, knight to e2 check was played here. Um, actually, this is maybe a little bit of an inaccuracy. The, the best way to play this position, and apparently one that is sufficient to hold, is uh, rook takes f7. Kind of a natural move here. Rook takes f7. Um, just <clears throat> getting getting the that uh, really dangerous pawn on f7 out of the picture. Queen takes g5 check, the king goes to f8, trying to run away from the checks. Bishop comes in here to d6 check. Of course, this looks very scary, but the queen, the king can run to e8. The queen comes down here with check. The king can go all the way over to d7, giving up a rook. But uh, black was already up a bunch of material, and now he can grab the bishop, and uh, white grabs uh, black's bishop. And so what, what we're left with is a rook and a knight, and some extra pawns versus the queen. And this position is rated uh, zero, zero, 0 by the chess engine. So apparently this is the way to uh, hold. So uh, anyway, Shanklin, who has been playing really well up till this point, finding the uh, the best defense to that attack. Uh, in fact, the only defense to the attack. Um, but right here he slips up with knight e2 check, and it's just not the most accurate way to defend. After the check... Um, queen takes. It's just a sacrifice of a piece to distract the queen. The king comes up to g6, and that was the idea. It's kind of a smart uh, defense because it's holding on to this uh, um, g-pawn, which is kind of a key to uh, black's king side safety. But, uh, well, it just turns out white can pile up on it. Here, uh, black is getting the rook back, uh, the pawn back on f7. So we have two rooks and a bishop against a queen and a bishop, and uh, Black still has an edge in pawns, but, uh, well, his king is just a little bit exposed here. And um, starting with bishop h4, uh, it's difficult to hold on to all of his uh, scattered pawns. So rook c to f8 was played, um, and now the, the queen can take on g5, so he ends up losing that pawn anyway. King goes to h7. Queen to h5. We've got kind of a uh, king hut going on here. And uh, king to g8, a lot of forced moves here. Queen to g6, creeping in closer. But it looks like uh, black maybe is defending. He's got all these pawns, but uh, in the course of defending, white is able to pick off... Um, <clears throat> I meant to say black has all these pieces around the king, but in the course of defending, white is able to uh, pick off his pawns one by one. So queen here, check. The king goes to h7. Bishop to e7 now, hitting the rook. Rook goes to g6, cancel that. The other rook. The rook goes to g6, trying to chase the queen away. Queen drops back to e5. We get uh, rook to e8. And, uh, well, let's just go forward. We get a check here. King goes to g7. Bishop to d6, saving the bishop. Rook to g8, bishop to e5, check. King... Uh, moves again. Notice this uh, light-squared bishop is still stuck over here on the queen side where it's been uh, <laughs> the whole game, basically. Never really got into it, and so the queen and the bishop are just able to outmaneuver the uh, the two rooks here. Um, king to f8. 
let's see, um, queen to h7 is played, just creeping in a little closer, hitting hitting the bishop over here. Rook takes g2, check. King to f1, rook back to g7, chasing the queen. The queen drops back. c3, trying to get some action going here. But now uh, queen, d6, check, was played. And uh, Shanklin resigned at this point. It's just uh, no way to... Uh, Hold everything, and the queen is uh, the queen is going to be in time to stop this uh, c pawn from uh, queening. So uh, Shanklin resigned. A very interesting game, I thought. Pretty exciting. So after ten rounds, uh, Nakamura is in the lead with uh, seven points. And actually, round eleven is the final round. So if Naka were to win tomorrow, that would clinch the title. Uh, Robson is half a point behind Ray Robson at six and a half points. So he could uh, still catch up with Nakamura if, uh, for example, Nakamura were to draw and uh, Robson were to win. And Onishuk, uh, uh, Dark Horse, is uh, in third place at uh, six points. So things will all be settled tomorrow. And uh, stay tuned for that coverage. See you then. Bye.